Transition Awareness Breathing. Feeling grounded for both children and parents is essential for healthy living and learning. Join Eartha Powell on this series for tips and tools for creating a harmonious environment for learning. Transition Awareness Breathing will help you and your child find an individualized path to tackle change, promote lifelong learning, and discover new approaches to calmness. I am so happy you're joining me today. Welcome to Transition Awareness Breathing Podcast. I am honored that Web Talk Radio invited me to start my own podcast. But why me? Well, let me tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Eartha, and I wrote a book called I Don't Know Adventures of a Forest Playground. My illustrator was Andrea Strongwater, and she beautifully illustrated my book. My ideas came in to beautiful color and creativity. My publisher was Mascot Books, and they did a wonderful job putting my project together. The story is about a little boy that goes on an adventure. Now, the adventure wasn't a planned adventure. Actually, it was an adventure that began out of a little bit of a miscommunication. And I think that's all I'll say about the book. Visit Amazon.com or Mascot Books, and you can get a copy. But let's get back why I was asked to start a podcast. Aside from writing a children's book, I've been kind of busy doing classes on a new venture that I started called Transition Awareness Breathing. Transition Awareness Breathing is a course that I developed on teaching children and their families about mindfulness, relaxation, and awareness. Well, your question might be, what does writing a children's book have to do with teaching mindfulness, meditation, and awareness? Ah, that is not the mystery. The teaching of transition awareness breathing is a result of my motivation of writing my book. The reason why I wrote my book is because when my daughter was younger, I used to tell her stories all the time, you know, bedtime stories. But then she challenged me and she said, Mommy, you should write these stories down. And it's like, yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. But she began to ask for the same stories. And I thought, you know, that's probably a good idea. So I did. I wrote the story down. And that was probably the beginning of, I don't know, Adventures of a Forest Playground. But the theme of the story was born from the motivation of my son. My son is a blessing, just like my daughter. He was very fast in everything, very adventuresome, and he still is very adventuresome. He loves to explore. However, the amount of his speed that he would get around was very much so I thought was wow I know you know children are fast but he's really fast and when he started school kindergarten things started to unveil itself it was hard for him to be focused it was hard for him to make friends And so the journey began. Through this journey, 
we learned with the help of our doctors that my son has attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. There's talk about the name being changed, but we won't get into that. So he has ADHD. And through the course of him going to school and learning how um, it stimulated him into doing different impulsive um, things, I had to learn how to communicate with him so that he could be successful and to find school fun. And that was before I started to do research and learn about ADHD. That journey was difficult. I'm not going to sugarcoat it and glamorize it. It was hard. It was very hard. My background is in nursing. And this transition awareness breathing, I must say, as a disclaimer, this is not a medical treatment uh, class. I would encourage anyone, if you find that your child or someone in your family needs some special counseling or um, is in need of medication, go talk to your doctor. Go talk to a health care um, specialist who can really help. And that's what I'll say about that. So, But I'm here to share my story. Uh, not to convince anyone to do the same thing that we have done. What I can say is each child is different, each family is different, and you have to find what works well with your family and your child. And one thing I will remember that my sister-in-law told me, she said, Ertha, you are his voice. And that registered throughout my mind through this whole journey. Because he wasn't able to speak for himself. And he was being categorized um, because, you know, people want to find a solution. But I knew that uh, there was something more going on. And so I started to read about um, ADHD and Maybe it's because of my nursing background. Maybe it's because of my experience. Um, I have a career that I completed, thank God, from the Navy. And I say thank God because the Navy was quite challenging. It was a rewarding uh, experience. Um, however, through those challenges, I must say it helped me grow. And I think I pulled away uh, from the Navy the tools to not to give up, to be able to observe a situation and try to help um, when all else fails. So when I started to do the research and I started reading about ADHD, The first book that caught my attention was called The Woman Who Changed Her Brain and Other Inspiring Stories of a Pioneer Brain Transformation by Barbara Aerosmith Young. When I read this book about a lady who, when she was a little girl a long time ago, had learning disabilities. I read how she didn't give up and how her mother didn't give up on her. I read how the mother found this child's gift and instilled in this little girl a lot of positive um, 
environmental learning kind of tools. And this little girl grew up uh, to be a woman who had a very strong interest in neuroscience. And to make a long story not so long, it's just that she grew up and she got her degree in um, neuroscience and she began to teach other children um, how to overcome, how to deal with different learning uh, challenges. And so the spark that entered my brain was if this lady, back in the, the day when she wrote her book, if she could find the key to help her, then then I can help my son. Because it was to a point that I just felt like the whole situation uh, was swirling, you know, like a whirlpool. And I felt like I was, I was in the middle of that whirlpool and I was searching and grasping and finding, trying to find something to help help um, my son and to help my family learn how to help him. And as an educator, um, n- a- another part of my background, I'm a nurse educator, uh, this I am very passionate about. I am very passionate about uh, making sure that everyone has an equal opportunity to learn, but not everyone is given the equal opportunity to learn. My personal Earth's philosophy is that everyone is able to learn. It's just that educators have to find the right combination to teach the children, to teach the adults. Many times, people's different experiences or their lack of experiences are barriers to go forward and teach children or adults who learn differently. And so with that, I began to learn about um, neuroplasticity. Um, That's where the brain actually continues to grow and things that you can do to help your brain grow. I learned about the importance of the power of positive and how that stimulates different chemicals in your brain when the um, brain is um, not only challenged but also rewarded with positive intake and input. I learned about the influence of breathing uh, and relaxing. And so as I was reading all this, I just, you know, grabbed my son and said, come on, I'm going to try this on you. <laughs> and that's exactly how it happened. <laughs> I'm telling you, um, I grab him and uh, sit down and we try some different techniques and it worked. And I tried a different technique and it worked. And so, um, so I shared my journey, my story with one of the mothers at my son's school. And she says, you know, Eartha, a lot of other mothers are going through the same thing. I had no idea. You know, sometimes we can be so involved with our own lives and our own uh, dramas that we really don't know what's going on around us. So that's how Transition Awareness Breathing started. When I talked to Web Talk Radio, they felt that there are other people who would love to hear my journey and to learn a little bit more about Transition Awareness Breathing. I do want you to know that you are not alone, that through the turmoil or the whirlpool that you think that you're in, that there is a light. Um, Next time, I would like to 
kind of get into what tools that I uh, teach my young students uh, in transition awareness breathing and their families. And I, my desire is to, um, to share my tools, especially during this time as we are all um, in quarantine during the COVID-19 period. This time will go down in history. It's, a, it's like a time marker. Um, I think it's going to be a little bit more than what were you doing in 2020? Because this thing is so global. I, th- I think this is going to be a historical marker where our children's children will be looking in history books and reading about this. And there's going to be so much change that comes out of this. And this is also where transition awareness breathing comes in because I also talk about and teach my young students about how to change, how to adapt to change, how to approach change. And so um, I look forward to talking to you again really soon. Thanks for listening to me. Have a great day. Bye.